This here is Xiaomi's most affordable smartphone. And even though it's not really made for the Western market, it still packs a lot of interesting features. For example, Android Go. So, let's go. So, let's start with the fact that this is Xiaomi's cheapest smartphone. And this model retails for around $60. And in return, you get a Snapdragon 425 processor, 1 gigs of RAM, 8 gigabytes of storage, dual SIM and a dedicated micro SD card slot, a 3000 mAh battery and an HD 5 inch display. More specifications will be listed in the video description along with the link where I got mine from. Now you might question yourself, Marty, how is that running smoothly on an Android device? Because one gigs of RAM is not really today's standard, let's say. And I totally get your point. It's running on Android 8.1. But more interestingly, it is running Google Special Edition software or system, Google Android Go. And this is a lighter and faster Android system with smaller app sizes for more storage space, for example. And also it gives you a smoother user experience for low end specifications. And since Xiaomi skin is a relatively heavy one, you won't find MIUI on top, but rather their own launcher, Mint. And quite interesting, if you know Xiaomi, they always remove the app drawer from any kind of smartphone, except for this one. They returned it, like, that's very interesting. So I get your point as well, guys. You want to know with a cheap phone, can we play games on it? For example, PUBG, because this is a really heavy one. And before I get into it, I want to ask you to hit that subscribe button and click on the bell icon to get notified every time when a new video is posted. Now that we have that out of the way, we want to play PUBG, but before we get to that, you have to download the game. And that's where I've noticed something, that the download speeds, or basically the internet speeds, is relatively, is relatively slow. It's usually around a quarter of what we can achieve here at home, 200 Mbps. So at the moment of uploading this video, you cannot play PUBG, unfortunately. You get the message that the device will be supported in a later stage this year, so you have to stick to other games for now. Playing many other games will just go okay as long as you stick with low settings. And Modern Combat 5 for example is quite okay to play, but you will have long loading times and the resolution is lower than the display its resolution to make it playable. So for the price, and if you keep in mind that this is a very low end device, I'm positively surprised by how smooth and how able and capable you're, you can play games on this one. And that might be because of the Snapdragon 425 processor together with the Adreno 308 GPU. And if you fail you and to do scores, I have to tell you that it looks like that they blocked the benchmarking application as it remains stuck at 0%. But in general, I'm positively surprised by how capable this device is of playing games. The user experience that I got with this phone is to my surprise Pretty smooth. Of course, it's not like a fully Android system, but all of the basic functionalities are still there. And there are, of course, the occasional stutters here and there, but I didn't expect it to be that smooth for a low-end device. Now, multitasking is possible, up to a certain extent, of course, and usually the last two or three apps you can load again. Now, you might expect it for the price, but there is no dual camera setup over here. But the main shooter is 8 megapixels. And that allows you to take still some pretty decent images and that are very usable for social media, for example. I'm surprised by the fact that HDR mode can be set to automatic and that the amount of detail that can be captured with normal conditions is a lot. Now, it's better to not take low light pictures and night pictures, of course, as the quality is just not desirable, but that's something maybe expected. It's blurry and the details are definitely missing. Now the same counts for selfies, those are in general usable for social media or for your daily dose of funny Snapchat filters and faces or your Instagram stories. And for videos you can record in 1080p without any kind of stabilization. There's out of focus, albeit that it's a little bit slow and that the footage is in general usable. But I also would advise you to stabilize it with the built-in stabilizer as this will make the footage a whole lot more pleasant. Last but not least is the battery found inside, which is interestingly enough, 3000 mAh. And considering the footprint and the size of this device, 
that's pretty impressive. And what's also really impressive is that because of this OS with a very energy efficient Snapdragon processor is that you can achieve two days of usage with this phone. And that is very nice for a lot of people I think that don't want to charge their phone. Speaking about charging, it does take around three hours to fully charge because of the five volt one amps charger and you charge it via the obvious micro USB cable. Now as expected, also the unboxing experience is very basic. You get it in this standard box with some specifications on the back and the sticker on the side indicates that it's the global version. Now inside you will get the smartphone first of course and as you can see Xiaomi likes to highlight the display, the Snapdragon 425 processor, the 3000 mAh battery and the camera. And below that you will find some paperwork and also the SIM popper. And below that we also have a normal charger which is 5 volt 1 amps and a micro USB cable. To conclude, I believe that for $60 that you have to pay for the Redmi Go, you get a lot of smartphone for your money. Of course, it's not really made for the Western market, for the European or for the American market, but I believe that Xiaomi did a great job at mixing or blending the price, quality and specifications ratio. Personally, I haven't seen for a really long time a device sub or below $75 that is actually worth it and that impresses me. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have some comments, questions or remarks, let me know down in the comment section below. Don't forget to give the video a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and then I hope to see all of you in the next one.